Hello everyone, this is Chris Jamel at Exiton Interactive. In this video, we will be primarily concerned with creating what Angular calls a form group. And the form group is essentially the object behind our form that allows us to have access to the values of the inputs that the user has typed in, as well as the uh, way that we add validation to all of our controls and, and several other things. And as usual, you can find a link to the article for this video in the description below. And let's see, before we begin, or let's start with uh, modifying a few things here. So one of the things that we did in the last video was to uh, modify the, or I guess we created the validator icons and we styled them, you know, gave them color based on which Phone Awesome icon was, uh, or Phone Awesome class was applied to them. We have forgot one thing. Let me go back to that file here. So that's in the source components SAS file here. One thing that I forgot, and as usual I forget when I don't check my notes and think that I'm going to remember everything, is that I needed to change the size of the times icon slightly. So we'll change font size. And this will be 1.3 EM. So let me save that. As usual, there's a watch running, so it's picking up all the changes. So if you look at the icon now, and I refresh, all we've done is made it a little bit bigger, and that's to bring it in line with basically the check mark and the circle, have them roughly the same size. And then the very last thing that we did in the previous video was to import the URI parser service so that we'll be able to parse the current URL and again, that's to tell whether or not the user is trying to log in or register. So what we're going to do is to take care of that, uh, uh, that now. So let's return. We can close the SAS file. We'll go to the TypeScript file. So the first thing I want to do in here is create a couple of uh, backing fields here. Bring up my notes before I do it again and forget something. So what we'll do is we'll create private, read only, and we'll call it is login. It's a boolean, and we'll set it null. So I like to set pro fields that I'm going to set later on to be null. That way I know that I created this, I set it, and then if it's null later on, you know, I forgot to set it to something, or, you know, it's not undefined anyway, which would be the, the default. So we have, and then we're going to make private private read only is register boolean null probably going to need access to is login or is register in the template so we need to give us uh, access so the way I'm going to do that is by uh, providing a public getter for each of those is login and it's just going to return this dot is login same for get is register return this dot is underscore is register all right so we've got those done now let's deal with actually setting them so I'm going to do that down here in the um, constructor so again you know, I mentioned it before if we look at the output here we have this path and we'll just use the path uh, property. So it's the slash account slash login or slash account slash register. So let's come back in. We'll say constant and we'll say action. And that's equal to the parsed URL. We we'll use the path property and we'll split on the forward slash. So that, because of the formatting, is going to create an array of three elements. The first element will be an empty string since there's a forward slash at the beginning. Next one, in this case, would say account, which would be the controller. And then finally, either login or register, which is the action. So that's the index to element. Since it's a string, what I want to do is go ahead and say to lowercase, just to be sure. We will eventually set it so that the our URLs are lowercase, so we wouldn't necessarily have to deal with it. But just to be sure, Next, we will say this dot is login is equal to action equal login. So if action equals login, then is login is true. 
And of course, you know, is register could be just not is login because um, we only have is uh, we only have login or register. But who knows? Maybe at some point in the future, um, you would add something to it. I don't know. Just to future prove it a little bit. We'll just say action equal register or is register. Now we don't have to worry about there only being these two states. We can save that and that basically takes care of uh, what we needed to do to catch up from the last video to now what we're going to start dealing with is creating the form group for the uh, for our controller or for our uh, authenticator. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to go to the uh, pug file, so the template. And bring up the notes again. And in here, first thing I want to do is to create a JavaScript variable at the top of the file. So we use a little, little dash and say var. And this time I'm going to say form group. And that's equal to auth form. And this is basically going to be the name of the form group. It's going to be the name of the property in, in our TypeScript file. Call it whatever you want. Usually I call it form. There's only usually only one form in component. You could, like I said, call it whatever you want. What we'll go down is to go down to our template and right here, the form tag. What we need to do is comma and we'll put square brackets form group. And that equals the form group that we just defined. So the square brackets are the way that we t that tell Angular that we're setting the DOM property on the form. So we're setting the actual DOM elements form group property to be equal to this form group string that we've defined previously. I'm going to save this. And then we will go back to the browser and we'll refresh. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we'll see the, we have an error here. And the error is saying, can't bind to form group since it isn't a known property of form, which makes perfect sense because, in fact, there is no form group property on a DOM element form. It just doesn't exist. It's coming from Angular, so we have to add a little bit more code to get this to work. We do that inside of our module definition. So for us, if we open up the app folder, we go to the account-authenticator.site.ts file, what we're going to do is import the module. And surprisingly enough, it lives in the forms package. We'll come over here. So we have two options. There's a forms module and a reactive forms module. So Angular gives us two ways, basically, of dealing with forms. One of them is a template-driven approach, where we add model statements to the template, in our case, to the pug file. And then the others is the, you basically set up everything within the TypeScript file. And I much prefer the TypeScript file myself. So, uh, and that's the reactive form of it. So what we're gonna do is get rid of this forms module here. We're gonna just import the reactive forms module. And then we do have to add that to our import statement in our module definition. I'll save that. We can close this file. We'll go back to the browser. If we refresh, ah, template's back, but we still have an error. This error basically saying form group expects a form group instance. Well, it's just telling us that we haven't done anything that we needed to do to actually create a form group yet, which is true. So we'll go back to our, well, first, before we go to the TypeScript file, we're going to need a helper file. So I'm going to go to the source folder. I'm going to create a new folder. We'll call that folder forms. We'll add a few things to this folder eventually. First thing that we're going to add is a new file. I'm going to call it form.controller.typescript.ts. I said, as I keep saying, you can name things however you want because I have no idea how I created the name for this thing. Um, but I'm sticking with it. So the first things that we need to do is to import a few things. So we'll do import and we'll do low dash for own is equal to require and low dash slash for own. I think a few videos back we talked about importing functions or 
in each function from Lodash instead of including the entire package. This is basically just requiring the for own function. Next, we're going to import a few things from, again, the forms package for Angular. What we need is a form builder. So the form builder is the class that we use to actually constru construct the form group. We do need to know what a form group is. We need to know what a form control is and validator function. All right. Next, we're going to imp export a class. I'm going to call it form controller. Controller. So the form controller is the way that we're going to interact with the form group that we create. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a public field of form. It's actually, I'm going to call it form, but it's a form group. Again, we'll make it null. And we'll go down to our constructor. We'll create a constructor here. And the thing that we want from the constructor is we need to be private, read only, and underscore FB, which is going to be the form builder. So we'll get the form builder. Actually, probably don't even need to keep a reference. Uh, well, yes, we do. So we'll get a instance of the form builder. And there is actually only one, or the main function, or main method that I use this for. Uh, but we're going to have a couple others, too. First one we'll have is a create uh, method. This is going to be the method that we call to create our form group. So we call this, what we'll have is this.form is equal to this dot underscore FB. And so the form builder has a couple of methods, three methods to it. This one I'm going to, the one we're going to pick is group. And so the group can uh, requires a configuration object, which we'll deal with here in just a second. So we're going to have that passed in. We're going to call that config. And like I said, it's an object. We'll give it to the config method. But we're going to do a little cleaning up of the type. We just want an object. This object is going to contain or the ability to index by string. So a key, you give it a key, and it will give you back an array. This array will have two uh, elements. The first one will either be a string or a boolean. So we're using the this uh, pipe or vertical line, whatever, to, that's the TypeScript way of saying that this is a union type. So that element will either be a string or a boolean. And then the next element will be a validator function. And then that's what get pack, that's getting packed in, passed into the group method on our form builder to create our form group. Next, and the main reason that I want this class is the method uh, public get control. And the get control method is going to take in, I call it name, you could probably better to call it key, but I'm just going to stick with uh, what I've already got. So you, you pass in the name, which is a string, and it's going to give you back a form control. All right. So first off, what I want to do is make a check. And this dot, whoop, no, we'll do type of this dot form equals undefined for this dot form is null. So if this is true, I want to get an error message. Throw new error attempted to access a control for calling create. So that's just saying call the create method before you actually try to get a control. Makes sense. Next, the control is going to be equal to this.form.controls. So the controls we can see here is a, like I said, an object with this string indexer. So we'll say this name. Okay. So if control, so if it's not undefined, we will return control. This is actually right now, I think, an abstract control. It's coming from our form, so we know it's going to be a form control. So as um, form control. So if it's if it is undefined, so that's the point here that I wanted to 
deal with is that this could be undefined. So if I mistype in the name or I, for whatever reason, didn't set up a particular control, if it doesn't exist, I'll get undefined. And I don't want undefined. I want to have it, you know, basically blow up in my face and say, hey, you're trying to access a control that doesn't exist. So we'll do that. Throw new error. And then what we'll do is say V, and we'll do single quote, and we'll interpolate name. The name control does not exist on the form. So that'll give us an error if it doesn't exist. And we're not going to need it for a while, but let's go ahead and make this up for a moment. We'll have another method we'll call update all values and validities does not take in any parameters and it's a void method what we'll do is we'll do that low dash for own that we had at the top this.form.controls so for each control in the controls object what we're going to do is to update its value and validity and mainly use it for when I reset the form so the form controller now is finished. Let's return to our TypeScript file. In the TypeScript file, we're going to need to import a few things. First, from the core Angular package, we're going to import the on init interface. Next, of course, we need to import a few things from the forms package. So I'm going to import here form builder and validator function. Next I'm going to import the controller that we just created. So it's in the forms folder, form controller. We called it form controller. Okay. So we're going to use we're going to have Angular provide us the form builder. So in order to do that, we need to update our providers array. We'll add the form builder. So now Angular will inject that into our constructor for us. So what I'm going to do is just come down to the constructor and I'll say FB is form builder, right? Now I need to have my controller, so I'm going to create private read only. Uh, I'm going to call it underscore form controller. It's of course, of type form controller. Well, no come down here and we'll say this dot form controller and equals new form controller and pass in the form builder. Great. So now we have that and let's go back up here and give us the form uh, that auth form before we forget to do it. So again I called the, in the pug file at the top here, we have this auth form. Well, let's create it. So we have auth form, and that should be a get. And then that, well, that's going to do then is return this.formcontroller.form. So the form within our form controller. And let's see. Let me go ahead and save that. We'll talk about something before I forget it this time. Still going to have the same error, basically telling us we need to do some work. But the main thing I wanted to look at here is if I go to the JavaScript bundle for my account authenticator, and so I have 11 matches for these for own. I'm searching for for own. So if we look for own, that's the import from our module or from the uh, forms controller class for own. This one though is we have the node modules low dash slash for own dot js. So the way that we're importing it, it's going to work just fine, except that, you know, the way we've done it, it's going to include this for own in any module or any form that asks for it or any module that asks for it, any bundle that asks for it. So this is not what we want. And there, again, the fix to this, as we already discussed earlier, was going to let's return to our vendor.ts file and we have one spot where we've 
imported the each function from lodash. Here we're going to import the lodash slash for own. We'll save that. Go back to the browser and refresh. Now, when we're inside this bundle, all we have are three matches. Those three matches are all coming from the form control or the use of the method. So that's just a reminder that we needed to uh, import that lodash function not only in our file that we're using it in, but in our vendor.ts file. So let me close that. So now let's talk a little bit more about our form here. So we know that when we create the form, well, let's see, let's, we'll implement, implement, uh, implements, and on init. So this is a, a interface. Use Visual Studio Code to help us out. I don't like methods to be up there. Put it down here. And we'll explicitly say public on it. We'll delete this. What we're going to do in the on it is to create the actual form group. So what we're going to need is we could probably have called this config, but I called it controls. And this thing is just going to be the object that we're going to pass into our form controller to create our form group. So again, what we need is an object that you can index by a string key, which will then give you a property of an it's an array property with string or boolean first element and validator function for the second. In the end, what we're going to do is to say, we're going to set all the controls, and then we're going to say this.formcontroller.create, and we're going to pass in the um, controls. So what's very important is to know what the key is, and we don't want to just keep writing strings all over the place. So what we're going to do is we'll come back up here to our fields. And let me scroll back up here. So for example, what we want is private get and I'll call it control email key. And this thing, of course, is just going to return the string control email. So this will be the key that we use when we want to access the actual email control. Right. Instead of typing them all, let me copy them in here and paste. I was testing this out. I don't think there's any reason that we should have these to be public. So we're making keys all private. We do need access to them in the template, but unfortunately we need access before any notion of TypeScript is around. We need it to compile the pug into HTML, so we're just going to have to copy the strings over. Next, while we're at it, what I want to do is add an easy way of getting to the actual controls themselves. So we'll say private get control email in this case. And this will return, we'll go into this.formcontroller.getControl.getControl. .control, and we'll pass in string, and that will be this.controlEmail key. So now this.controlEmail will give me easy access to that uh, form group control in the form control. And of course, we're going to need access to all of them. And again, I want to make these private. Oops. Private. And of course, I can see that I've somehow forgotten the remember me. So let's do private get control remember me. Let's return this dot form control get control and this dot remember me key. So now we have easy access to all of the controls. What we'll do is return to our on init function here. What we want is say controls, and we need to say this dot control email key. That again, set to an array whose first value is a string or a boolean, we'll say email so we can see. And 
null for the validator functions for the moment. So we'll do the same thing for all of them. Let me come back in here. And so we have the email confirm key, password key, password confirm key, remember me, username. What I'm going to do is just say confirm email. We'll say password confirm password. We'll make this true and username. All right, so we'll have basically everything that we need in the TypeScript file set up for the form, but we need to marry that up with the actual template. So we'll return to the pug file. And what we need, like I said, we need the keys for the controls. And these are, so these are exact same. So control email is the same as the key up here. Control email, control email confirm, control email confirm. So these are the keys for the controls. Next, what we need is to modify the form control group. And we want to do, or the mix in, the form control mix in. We'll first, we'll put input type, so we tell what type of input it is, and then we'll put key. We'll go down to our input tag and put our parentheses. We need to know type is equal to input type. And then we'll say name is equal to key. And I think Angular calls it form control name, and we'll say key there. So then we need to modify the calls to our mix-in. So we'll say that the type of input is text, and the key is the um, control username key that we've defined uh, just now. For now, we're just going to put text for the passwords as well. Control password key text Control, password, confirm key. Emails, type email, control email key. Also a type of email and control email confirm key. <laughs> Done this a few times and every time I get that checkbox first, I'm going to now avoid it, get the thing that I actually want. Next, uh, we do have one more input, which is the remember me input. We don't call the forum control mix in, so we'll do this manually ourselves. So we'll say name is equal to, and that's control remember me key. Okay, and we need the forum control name to be the control remember me key again. Now we'll save that. See, everything's green. Let's go back to our, cross our fingers, hit refresh, and no errors. And just as importantly, if we actually look at the control, we see that it has in those initial values, even check marked the remember me checkbox. So let's go back first before I forget another thing. And we actually just want these to be empty strings. And we want this to default to false. We'll save that. Return back. Refresh. Still no errors in our console. And now we have our empty inputs. And the checkbox is not checkmarked by default. So I think uh, so we've created the form now, the form group that backs our form. I think in the next video, we will tackle the validation. So we'll add the validators to our form group, form controls, and then we'll have a way to update these icons then in real time, depending on the state of the inputs themselves. So I think that'll wrap it up for today, and I will talk to you later.